uh, in the last year, uh, one important change we have done is to resize and restructure. Last year, 14-15 uh, 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 was 7.4% um, uh, uh, and 15-16 um, in the first two quarters we are 7.2%. So uh, I, I think you know the, the economy has recovered. The world export market by itself, merchandise export market, is about 18 trillion. It's really a large, gigantic market, which in which our share is only one and a half percent. China is more like 12 to 13 percent. In the last say. 11 months, 12 months that you have been here, uh, what would be the three or four significant changes uh, Niti Aayog has seen uh, from what taking off from what the Prime Minister had initially announced? First fundamental change in Niti Aayog was that uh, uh, this was uh, in effect recognition that uh, uh, we are no plan. Uh, we are no market economy. Uh, for transition, I think we are still completing the twelfth five-year plan. Uh, so this uh, has not uh, shown up in the budgets, etc. So you still see the plan, non-plan. Uh, but uh, by all accounts, it seems that you know we'll see uh, that change also. So one is clearly that you know uh, 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 we are now moving. Uh, uh, towards a system uh, in which uh, which would be more kind of uh, uh, consonant with uh, uh, which would be more in uh, the spirit of our uh, approach to economic policy making right so now as we go beyond that um, a number of directions i could take but first of all in terms as as niti ayog is concerned uh, in the last year, uh, one important change we have done is to resize and restructure. So when I came, the institution had about 1250 positions of which about 800 were filled at the time. So a downsizing was done and uh, we are now down to about 500 uh, employees in the institution altogether. There is also restructuring within the institution so that uh, we have now divided the staff into two hubs. Uh, one is called the uh, Knowledge and Innovation Hub uh, and the other is called the uh, Team India Hub. Uh, Team India Hub largely kind of interfaces with the states because cooperative competitive federalism is one of our important mandates. Um, uh, and knowledge and innovation hub uh, 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 basically has about uh, um, it's going to have about anywhere between 12 to 14 or so verticals uh, uh, and, and these will deal with different sectors. Um, there's still going to be some interface between states and hubs etc. I mean that clearly the ultimately lot of what the institution does has to do with the states. Yeah. So that's the second, I would say, uh, set of changes. Third, uh, uh, we certainly have now moved uh, 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 to take a very different approach uh, uh, to, to our relationship with the states. So the previous relationship or the relationship under the previous institution <coughs> was very much one, very much an unequal kind of relationship because the institution gave money to the states and so this was the giver of the money and the states were the recipients of money uh, so that necessarily it sort of made the relationship unequal. Uh, states had, would often be lined up at the institution uh, to lobby for monies, uh, much less so of that now. Now we are uh, uh, on a much more equal kind of relationship which is reflected well you know in different in variety of ways but one very good example of uh, the, the uh, uh, equality of the relationship is that when Prime Minister at the very beginning um, at the first general council meeting uh, appointed three uh, uh, subgroups of the chief ministers to get them to actually 
make recommendations in three important areas. And that was, you know, one was this centrally sponsored schemes. And uh, this is really for the first time that the government basically gives control of what are its schemes uh, for, uh, uh, to be executed in the states and by the states uh, to the states. Uh, 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 and likewise, there are two other groups uh, called Swachh Bharat. That's a significant chunk of the total resources, the CSS. The CSS is, is uh, 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 it, it is a large sum. It is a large sum of resources involved. Uh, and uh, But one in which the states actually have a direct stake because they also share the expenditures on these uh, schemes. And, and so it is important that the states themselves own the schemes, that they share the, the goals of the schemes and all also. So this was done very differently. Then you got Swachh Bharat and uh, Skill Development were the two other subgroups of the Chief Ministers. So a lot of the policies, you know, both, those are both also areas, Swachh Bharat as well as Skill Development uh, of great importance to the Prime Minister. Uh, but uh, his view also was that looking at what do, uh, how, uh, that how, sh how we execute these uh, should also come from the states. Uh, last one year we have uh, seen that the economy is stuttering and trying to you know cross the 7% 8% uh, mark one of the biggest uh, discussions and debates has been on interest rates uh, for a growing economy the inflation targets of 4% as laid out in the monetary policy framework uh, does it bind RBI's hands not to say reduce rates further uh, we haven't really heard from you what your views on are, say, interest rates, whether we need to further cut interest rates for, you know, to boost growth, uh, especially at a time when the government really doesn't have too much of financial resources to uh, pump prime the economy. Uh, so first let me say, you know, the, I think the economy is recovering, actually it's not uh, uh, sputtering. <laughs> Uh, we, we, uh, last year, 14-15 uh, 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 was 7.4% um, uh, uh, and 15-16 um, in the first two quarters we are 7.2%. So uh, I, I think you know the, the economy has recovered uh, uh, and uh, my you own… You believe in those growth I do. Rates. Yes, I do. We can, we can discuss that. Because yes. the numbers themselves were subject to a lot of, uh, say, you know, doubts. But I, on the, I mean, I've been, uh, you know, I, I'm, I've not been one of the doubters of the numbers. Uh, uh, as an economist, of course, I always look at, uh, at things skeptically first, so that, you know, I can go back and check whether yeah. what was done was correctly done. Yeah. We can come to that, yeah. let me, but let me complete this thought that um, uh, so, so the average growth rate uh, for the first two quarters is 7.2 percent. I am personally predicting that you know by the time we get to the fourth quarter we would uh, 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 get to 8 uh, percent. So, so growth wise we are doing well. Could we do uh, uh, better? Yes. Uh, I had you know even before, uh, before the last cut in the interest rate happened which was 50 basis points. Uh, I had said that you know the cut had to be between 50 to 100 basis points. So my answer publicly is there that it, it ought to be uh, ought to be uh, a, a bit more. Uh, so there is room for further cuts in the interest rate. Um, I also think I you know even part of the reason I come I come to come to you there are two two ways to answer this uh, 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 GDP figures issue. One way to approach the problem is that look, you know, um, uh, 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 is there something wrong with any of the changes that have been made? Are the cha do the changes represent methodologically uh, and data wise an improvement or we are going backwards? So I looked at each one of those, you know, component changes that were made with, with respect to the manufacturing, services, etc. Every one of these, and I also had very extensive discussions with uh, T. C. Anand, uh, who is the chief statistician, and all, and I came to an unequivocal conclusion that you know there is nothing uh, uh, that uh, uh, they changed which did not actually represent an improvement in the methodology. So then that gets you back to this other question that you know that people say that oh you know it doesn't feel like you know so whatever you know wherever that feel is coming from, but. One source, I think, of, of the discomfort of some uh, uh, is the fact that 
uh, inflation and particularly when you come to the wholesale price inflation which uh, goes in a big way in the calculation of the nominal GDP has been incredibly low. Now your profitability depends on nominal not real GDP. Your earnings depend on nominal not real GDP. A lot of the perceptions, the government's own revenues depend on nominal and not r r r real GDP. So, so and, and general perceptions often, uh, uh, when you talk to you know the, 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 the particularly those who are running businesses and all, hey, how is your business going? It depends on the nominal uh, 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 magnitudes. These are all nominal magnitudes. And so, in 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 in, circum in in times of very low inflation, or you know, the, the relevant inflation even happens to be negative, uh, which is the case with the wholesale price indexes. I, I think, to a very large degree, that explains. That's one factor. And the other major factor I would point to is that when the government actually, the government inherited an economy in which there were several of the sectors which were truly in very bad shape, and Pulling them out was not in any way an easy task. So there was a healthy part of the economy which could come up relatively fast, which it has actually. If you look at things like auto and auto parts, uh, you look at many of the machinery sectors, um, uh, uh, some of the services sectors, they are doing well actually. Uh, 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 it, but then the some of the sectors which are really suffering, so you're starting the construction, steel, uh, some of the infrastructure, etc. Have a harder have had a harder time, precisely because you know this was all tied into the ultimately the, the, the uh, their fortunes were tied to this fortunes the banks and the banks the ability to then give extra loans and credit was tied to this cleaning up of these sectors uh, and that has been tougher that has been tougher so and often you know the 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 the, 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 the uh, who makes the most noise often it's the sectors that are not doing well make the most noise. So that as a result, the, 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 the voices of the sectors that are doing well and succeeding simply are not heard. Uh, what will be the major thrust areas in the upcoming budget uh, to further boost uh, growth in the economy given that uh, uh, legislative changes uh, are facing resistance in parliament? So that is a bit early for me to say because you know the discussions will now just begin. Um, uh, I can maybe tell you a little bit about my, one of the my favorite things I'd like to see the government do, <laughs> uh, which is you know I'm just I'm thinking about it. Uh, but the Prime Minister has this uh, uh, program called Sagar Mala, right? So which which he says that this is not about you know uh, uh, a development of ports. He wants port-led development. Um, what happens in India is that you know we, we try to develop simultaneously every pocket of the country which uh, which has the disadvantage of then diluting the resources or so no single part of the you know so I, I think you know one possibility that we could think in terms of is creating some sort of coastal economic zones so this this you know when we tried these special economic zones etc is too small and too you know product specific etc uh, i i sort of looked at a bit at the chinese model uh, uh, from the 1980s and and i think there is some logic to it where you take a larger wider area also thinking of the coastal economic zones would put the focus right away on the export markets as well because again the big markets are really the export markets. Uh, to give you an idea, today our economy is $2 trillion and if you think in terms of uh, goods output, uh, that's less than a trillion. The rest is more than half is services as we all know. Um, the world export market by itself, merchandise export market is about 18 trillion. It's really a large gigantic market which in which our share is only one and a half percent. China is more like 12 to 13 percent. At our kind of labor of 500 million workers, 10 million to 12 million joining every year, we got a lot of scope to, to, to capture the, the merchandise export markets uh, on a larger scale. 